God's word upon which we base our message this day is recorded for us in the Old Testament lesson pointed for this weekend from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18, words that we have heard read just a few moments ago. In the name of Jesus, the one who provides for all of our needs, dear friends. You know, our lives seem to be full of trials, never seems to end. The economy goes sour and our life savings takes a dive. We lose a job. Our children grow up and they start life on their own and we wonder if they're going to make it or if they're going to move back in with us. People we love get sick. People get injured. Some die. We get sick. We get injured. Life is full of trials. Today's appointed readings from the scripture talk about trials. Were you listening? All of them mention trials. The epistle from James began this way. It said, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. We looked at the Old Testament lesson, which is the basis for our message today. And that is that story about the incredible trial that God presented to Abraham and Isaac. God said to Abraham that he should take his son and sacrifice him, his own son. Then we looked at the gospel, and the gospel tells of the trial of Jesus as he went into the wilderness, the desert wilderness, after he had been baptized in the Jordan River. He goes to the wilderness for 40 days, and he's tempted by the devil. Our readings are full of trials today. Some of us may think that because we have faith in Jesus Christ, because we are a member of the Christian church, that somehow we are immune from these kinds of things, these challenges and these trials. But we learn from the scripture that this is not true. The Christian life is a life that will be full of trials. We don't like to hear that. Even as we are asking that question, why? Why do these things happen to us? God is at work behind the scenes in the midst of our trials. Abraham might have asked, why is this happening? When God asked him to sacrifice his son. God's request, God's request was an amazing test of faith. Abraham had his faith tested royally that day. Isaac was the son that God had given Abraham and Sarah in their old age. They waited for this son. Sarah had been unable to give birth to children. Abraham, we're told, was 100 years old and Sarah was 90 when Isaac was born. Isaac was to be the heir who would continue the covenant that God made with Abraham. That a Messiah would come. That a Savior would come. And Abraham waited a long time for his son Isaac to be born. And so he loved him so deeply. But Abraham meets God's request. He goes forward. He doesn't say no. He meets it with faith and with obedience. So Abraham trusts in God. He doesn't understand it. He had a lot of questions. But Abraham trusts God in spite of how hard it was to do what God asked him to do. Abraham did as God commanded. Now on the way to where he would be sacrificing Isaac, it, took, it actually took three days to get there. And certainly Abraham had much time to be able to think and ponder this request. But he still obeyed. He didn't change his mind. He obeyed in spite of the emotions that he must have felt as as he heard Isaac's question. Imagine, they're bringing the wood, they're bringing the fire. And then Isaac turns to Abraham and he says, Dad, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? can only imagine what Abraham as a father was thinking. At the same time, Abraham might have asked again, why? Why is this happening to me? 
At that same time, God was behind the scenes answering, I will provide. I will provide the sacrifice. I will provide the lamb. And so we hear that God did provide the lamb for Abraham. It was a ram that was stuck in the bushes, all of a sudden appearing when the angel stopped Abraham from taking that knife and sacrificing his son. So God provided the lamb. And even more importantly, God provided the lamb for all people. The scripture says that a sacrifice was demanded by God. God does what he would do, would, what he, God does what he would not allow Abraham to do because God's very own son is put to death. Jesus is the lamb of God. God's son, Jesus, is the sacrifice. One of the trials that some of us encounter on a daily basis is a traffic jam. This might not be so bad compared to what Abraham asked, what God asked Abraham to do. But I can assure you that your worst traffic jam cannot compare to the world's largest traffic jam that occurred in mid-August of 2010 in China. It stretched for 60 miles. We have a little glimpse of a portion of that traffic jam. It stretched for 60 miles all the way from uh, Beijing to the northern province of Mongolia. It was so intense that trucks were moving only about two miles per day. And some drivers were in the traffic jam for more than 10 days. They were in desperate need of food and, and water and, and fuel. And some of the vendors who walked in between the cars raised their prices, we were told, up to four times as much as it cost for food and water. And other vendors walked by the cars and threatened to break windshields if the motorists refused to buy from them or complained about how high the prices were. What a situation. And what a contrast to God's reaction to our desperate need, that of forgiveness, and that of being reconciled to God. God knew what we needed, and he provided it at no cost to us. In contrast to the merchants who raised their prices, God made the payment himself for what we needed. And Martin Luther says, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, he provided that lamb, his own son, Jesus. That was the price that God paid. And instead of threatening to harm us if we did not receive what he provided, God offers the gifts that he purchased for us, those gifts of forgiveness, gifts of reconciliation to him and also the gift of eternal life. And today, God still works in the midst of our trials, and when we ask, why is this happening to me? He's there. He's there to provide. He's there behind the scenes, working out his holy will. And during these times, he provides his direction, and he provides mercy to take care of us, and God will provide for those who bear and endure these trials. But we must trust him. We must believe in him. We must believe that he has our best interests at heart. And so we walk by faith, don't we? Believing that God is always working his ultimate and loving purposes, even in the midst of tests and trials and challenges in this life. And so God's people, having received and continued to receive encouragement through the example of Abraham, remaining faithful and obedient to God. This is why we have this story before us today, to remind us that Abraham trusted in God, that we too can trust in God, and he will help us. This is why we hear this story told about in the book of Hebrews, in the book of James, in the New Testament. In the same way, faithfulness on the part of God's children today can be a source of great encouragement for others. When you are faithful to God, when you trust in him, even during difficult times, other fellow believers see that and gain strength and say, yes, I can tr 
trust in God. They are encouraged by us. It even encourages unbelievers to ask the question about what is the source of, their, of our steadfast hope in the midst of life's trials as unbelievers look on and see how, how can they trust in God during that difficult time. We have probably all uttered those words, why me, when we have been faced with a serious trial in life. God wants us, however, to turn our focus away from ourselves and turn towards him when we face trials. For we know that God is at work in the midst of these trials. God works in us and through us in the midst of trials to accomplish his purposes. Perhaps an appropriate response would be for us to ask this question of God. Oh God, what do you wish to accomplish in me and through me because of this trial? Then we look at trials in a different way. We see them as God working through that process. Life may seem to be filled with trials. The trials of life may cry out to us. Why is God letting this happen? Does God really love me? And when that happens, we need to look to the sure and certain promises of God's love. We need to believe in Jesus' death on the cross for our sin. And when we do this, we look with eyes of faith beyond our suffering and beyond our momentary darkness, and we know that there is light ahead. We need to know that the Lord will provide we need not fear anything, for he is faithful, and he will keep his promises. And when we view our trials in this way, we end up growing stronger in our relationship with God, stronger in our faith. Always remember, the Lord will provide. He did it for Abraham and Isaac. He did it for many others in the Old and New Testament. He will do it for you. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.